I'm having a Navy flashback. A beautiful 1911 from 1916, part of an Argentine contract. Um, they slipped in the back door before we got in involved in World War I. But this thing, it, you, you saw me shake it. it it's loose. Um, and we've got some parts for it. We've got the long trigger. We've got the correct beaver tail. Um, we've got a straight mainspring housing that need to be installed into this gun. And 1911s are not Lego guns. So let's do that, clean up some grip panels, and see if we can make this old girl look like it's 1916 all over again. Mag's clear. Look up inside the barrel, we got nothing. There are a lot of different ways to take a 1911 apart, but I prefer to just shove the cross pin out while the gun is together. Take it out, put your hand underneath it, and just pull the frame off it like this. The reason why I like to take this, the frame off is one, any parts that are gonna rain out, just shake out on the bench. But I don't like rotating this bushing too many times while the barrel is in the locked up position. So what I like to do is take them apart, pop the spring out, and man, that thing's got a huge spring on it. We'll take a look at that. Kick that up, pop that pipe out, and then, see right now the barrel's not locked shut. So we're not putting any wear on it. Now this is a pretty loose bushing. And that comes out, all right. We have the locking lugs on the top. And this is the original barrel. And I'd be willing to bet you that this is the original bushing also. This sucker is loose. This is a loose bushing. That's a lot of side to side slop in this. Um, again, I would be willing to bet you that this is the original bushing. The barrel is thinner here and then it's thick right there at the end. And the bushing is only the, this dimension down about the end of my thumbnail. So when the barrel is back, it can bend down ever so slightly. And then as the link comes up, it has the ability with the link up to lock into position without binding. Bruno found that out when he was doing um, an animation on this. He's like, what the heck? You can't be in two places at once. And you can't. Okay. We're gonna want to, we're gonna get a punch here and uh, Pop the firing pin in and take that bottom out. Push that in and kick this plate up. Capture it with your finger so that when the firing pin takes off, it doesn't do this really cool fly across the room thing. Firing pin, firing pin, spring. And then we can pop the ejector out. I'm sorry, the extractor. Extractor comes out, we're there, we're there. And that pretty much takes the slide apart. For the purposes of this discussion, we're not gonna take the sight off. This front sight is staked in, we're not gonna do any of that. That slide is slipped completely clean. I'm just gonna say this right here. You see that little silver mark right there? Usually that line runs all the way up the frame because people think that it's necessary to start here, push down with their fingers, scratch the crap out of the bluing and then run it up underneath this. Just start here, kick the spring-loaded ball out of the way and punch it on in. It's a lot, uh, a lot less abusive to your finish to be able to do that. Again, as we take the, take the screws off for the, um, for the grips, you wanna make sure that you get just the screws. If the bushings start to come out, then you're in a world of hurt. Never take the bushings out of a 1911 unless you absolutely have to have them out because the frame is very thin. Hang on a minute here. The frame is very thin. The frame's not very thick here. I tend to like to just pick these grips out from the inside like that. Um, there's a two things that I want to show you here. There is not a whole lot. Can you... Give me another focus right here. You need to be careful with these grips because that little ledge right there at the end of the screwdriver, that little ledge is all you've got holding this thing on. These are nice grips, they're aftermarket. We'll use them on something else um, and we'll get another pair of grips.
never drop this hammer and allow it to hit this piece of the frame right here. Don't do that. It'll batter, it'll beat it up. So what we're going to do is grip safety in and ride the hammer down. And when the hammer's down, it's it doesn't have any tension on it, you see? So you can then flip the frame over. There's a dimpled side and then there's a round side, all right? So you can start it working, you can get it moving, you can do whatever you want. Lay a punch on it and just drive it down. Now this thing feels like it's had the absolute terwillikers pounded out of it because it's fighting me going through and it shouldn't fight me like this because there's no, there's no drag on it. So this pin has to be physically altered. It shouldn't be, yeah, I see the end of this has been mushroomed out right there. So it shouldn't have been that hard because there's no, there's no tension on this thing. The mainspring is not tensioned when the hammer is all the way down. All right. So we've got the mainspring housing out. Now we're going to look at how to get the rest of, uh, rest of this claptrap out. All right. We're up here now. We're working up. The hammer has to be cocked and we'll show you why later. But there is a sweet spot here where the grip safety, I'm lifting upwards on it, will just pop out and it's it's trapped here and and and, and i want to get into how this works and why you can't just drop parts into these guns pull that over to one side and then I'll let the hammer come down and the grip safety comes out in our hand and i'm just starting a pile over there and then this three leaf spring comes out and this three leaf spring is been bent massaged it's been a lot of things the end of this has been cut down. I don't know if any of that's right, wrong, or indifferent. We'll get a back. We'll get uh, go back and take a look at that. But that leaves you with a couple of things here. The pins that hold the hammer in have a little flare on the end of them right here. So they are. There is an end to them. Let me get my fingernail behind it. It's a little top hat on it, and the other side doesn't have that. So when the uh, thumb safety is in, it captures these. So once that goes in, then the hammer can come out. And then let me get on the bottom of that pin on the other side. Where is that? There it is. That'll pop up. Same deal. This is the disconnector and sear pin. And then the disconnector and sear will just come right out of the bottom of the gun right there. Bang, that's out. And then about the only thing we've got left is this plunger assembly comes out this way and there is a kink in that spring and that kink has to be there because that kink separates the spring into two pieces and it also prevents it from gratuitously falling out of the tube it puts a little bit of drag on it so that if you have to take this gun apart this thing doesn't fall out okay this is about as far down as i i would take this don't take the bushings out this tube here can actually be popped off the frame, but you're going to have to stake stuff when you go back in, and you really don't want to do that. Um, and I've covered this before on one other gun, but I'm going to say it again because it always bears repeating. That is not a screw. That is not a screw. That is a plunger. You stick a screwdriver in that, but you don't turn it. And you lift up on the magazine catch. There it is. Let me get my hand out of the way. You lift up, and then there's the spot. You'll feel it. It will turn and be captured by that slot right there. So that part does this. Let me get my fingers on that. That will do that. And that's how it spring loads closed. So what will happen is guys will put screwdrivers on these things and just rip this little tit right off the end of it. Don't be that guy. In this view, the hammer is down and the tail of the sear is lifted up and the thumb safety cannot engage. We have the slide in here because I want the thumb safety's upward um, position is dictated by a notch cut in the back of the slide. So as we cock this, you can see the three fingers spring in here. This is the middle um, part that is actually pushing the, uh, the disconnector up. 
And then this leaf of the spring is pushing down on the sear. So watch this, as this thing goes in a half cock, you can see that the sear rotates around the pin. And then we go in, but you still cannot put the grip safety on until you come back into full cock. Now you've got to load this. I've taken the stirrup off of it so we can see what's going on. But at full cock, you've got to have it, well, let me get my thumb out of the way here. You've got to have it loaded. And then when it's loaded, you can push back on the trigger. It pops the sear back out of the way and allows the hammer to fall, all right? Now, when it does that, uh, the disconnector would ordinarily move up, but I've got this all immobilized in a vise right now. Put this in full cock though, get the sear where it needs to be, load the hammer up, and then you can engage the grip safety and the grip, the thumb safety, I'm sorry, and the thumb safety just, you can see that little silver spot right there. It's just touching this and with the sear up and the thumb safety uh, where it is, you cannot push the sear back and disengage it. So the way this thumb safety works is, is that it locks, it blocks the bottom of the sear across this pivot pin right here and up into the nose of the hammer. So that's how this safety works. And I don't even know if I can show it here. This is the old trigger and here's the back that we're looking at. Okay, so here's the back part of it right there. So this can move backwards unless this surface right here on the grip safety, if the grip safety is rotated up, this tip right here, right there, that shining spot right at the end of the pencil will touch this bow and prevent it from coming back unless you grab it and rotate it up. And when you rotate it up, now the back of the bow can go up underneath it like this and actually gain access to the uh, to the sear and the disconnector. So that's kind of where we are in the back end of the gun. Now, this piece is fitted. This thumb safety piece right here, you can see it's sweeping across the back end of the sear right now, right up in here. That's fitted to within like a thousandth of an inch. You've got to do it with a stone and by hand. So if you take a thumb safety off another gun that has already had this surface fitted right here and it's overfit, the safety doesn't work. Um, if you take um, a, th a uh, I'm sorry, a hand safety, a grip safety that has been fitted and this edge right here has been overcut, it won't work and you will assume or they're too big and they don't work these guns have to be, you have to front fit to the part that comes in front of it and back fit to the part that comes back from it. That's why we don't just go dropping parts in this. So what we've done now is we've proven that this trigger bow is actually going to work for us because it allows us to set the safety. I still don't know whether or not this works. So let's put this in here. So now you got to have the hammer all the way back in full cock. Now the thumb safety's up in there and the grip safety's in. And now we have the grip safety captured at the bottom. And what we wanna see is whether or not thumb safety off, if we pull back on a trigger, if we're allowed to pull the trigger back far enough. And in this particular case, we are allowed to pull the trigger back far enough. This is not working. So we're going to have to go refit this, put a blob of weld up on it and make this thumb safety work because you're not supposed to be able to trip the sear with this up. You're supposed to have to have that down and then that should go easily. It's not going to take much. We're going to stretch it a little bit and uh, see if we can make that work. And the way we'll do that, let me get this open here. I'm trying to show you something and ordinarily these are where my hands are and that's that's no good um hang on a minute okay there we go let me get this out so what we've got to do is make this surface right here stick out further this has to stick out this way and you can see it's been trimmed so what we'll do is we'll go over to the big vise and pound on this a little bit make it a little bit thinner and see if we can get it out a couple of thousandths of an inch and make it fit 
I took it over to the vise and cr crimped it in the vise here. I really, I stepped on it and I smashed it and it made it a little bit longer. Then I dropped a, a 20 ounce ball peen hammer on it a couple of times and I made it a little bit, I'm gonna get it into focus here. You can see how now it's got a bit of a taper to it and I've made it longer. Let's see if that had any effect. I had to fight this a little bit, um, but I got it all back in here. This is an odd angle to work on a gun at, but where we've got it now, I can pull the trigger and this does not drop. But if we put the grip safety in, it does. So by squeezing that part ever so slightly, making it a little bit longer, the thing is, how do you know to do that? You do it in a lot of 1911s, but as that trigger bow came to us as a spare part, it interfaced correctly with the thumb safety, but did not interface correctly with the grip safety, which by the way, I might add is here specifically so that when you drop this gun, you don't shoot your horse. As you can see in these photographs here, there was a little bit of uh, structural rust all over this thing. So we coiled it and took it apart. We'll deal with the cosmetics of the outside of it when we really put the gun back together again. But I had to get this here because when we shoot it, I want to shoot it with this spring pack. There is an 800 pound gorilla in here and that's this. That is a lot of slop, but not only do we have side to side, we have up and down on both ends. All right. So I'm about to show you guys something that unless you've got some training and you've done a lot of research, do not do this because what I'm about to show you can destroy a gun very quickly and it involves the use of a lot of force and the slide. There are four points of contact on this slide that really matter. One, two, three, four. And you can see a lot of silver on top of this. This thing has been worn off all the way around. This gun was run dry for years. This thing was run dry and I'm gonna, right there, you see the silver lines there? So we've got to compensate for that. So there's two things we're going to do. We're gonna actually crimp the slide in ever so slightly in the middle and in the back so that it touches at the four spots. And then once we've taken the side to side slop out of it, we're gonna take the up and down slop out and we're gonna do that by checking our hammer faces polished and we're gonna actually peen these down. We're gonna knock them down and we're gonna take these sidewalls and bend them down a little bit. We do not wanna zero this gun out. We're not trying to take all the slop out of it. We're just trying to take six inches of lateral play at 50 yards out of this thing. Um, and like I said, I was having Navy flashbacks because that's what all our garbage sounded like. The gun runs great. Just can't hit anything with it. We're gonna wanna, we're gonna want the slide to get a little bit tight right there and a little bit tight right here. You can't see the pencil lines, but I can. It doesn't matter how sloppy this slide is when it's all the way to the rear. It only matters right when it's up front. So this vise can put enough torque on something to really screw it up. And I mean really screw it up. So I put tape on a jaws and I'm just bumping it in a little bit up here and bumping it in a little bit back here. And we're going to try it again. There's no way to measure this. But I did not hit it very hard. Nope, I got to go a little bit more. But again, I'm going to tell you, don't get carried away here or you will ruin this gun. And I don't want to ruin it. I just want to take a little bit of the side to slide play out of it. There are tools for this that professional 1911 builders will use. And I'm going to tell you I'm not that guy. Okay, see how tight that is? So I want a little bit, but not that bad. Okay, and now the side to slide play is gone out of the back, but not quite out of the front. We're gonna take a little bit more out of the front here. I'm gonna take a little bit more out of the front. I'm looking for my pencil marks right there. A little bit more out of the front. Now, this side right here by this ejection port is very thin and very weak. There's a lot more metal over here. So I'm just feeling for the yield point here. I don't want to get it too tight. Okay. And again, we'll have to, we'll just put a little bit of rouge on that and get that 
better off there. And now almost all of the side to side slop is gone. And now all we got to do now is worry about the up and down slop. Be careful you don't crush the gun. You're just a little bit. And I know dedicated 1911 builders are having a heart attack right now. But I'm not really killing this hammer. I'm just making the metal flow a little bit and trying to suck this down. Now in the back corner, two ounce ball pin, please. I grab my punch on a stick and I'm just gonna lay that right there in the back corner because I don't, I would really rather not take this ejector block off. All of the slop is gone in the rear and there's just a little bit in the front. So we'll bring the front down a little bit more, but all of the slop is gone in the back now, see? And we'll put a little bit of, um, a little bit of 220 um, polishing grit on this thing and get it nice and, nice and worn in and we'll be there and then we will oil it and run it wet. I'm gonna take a little bit more out of the front and we should be good to go. Do not want to zero in 1911 out. You really don't, or it won't work. Oh yeah, there we go. There it is right there. We got just a little bit left up and down just a little bit, not six inches at 50 yards. The back end is good. I'm going to put a little bit of polishing comp on this thing. We're going to put it back together again, take it outside and run it. So we're outside. We've got one round in this magazine and we're going to put one more in it. And what we're really out here to do is to prove that everything plays in a sandbox. Um, we've got the old grips on it because I've already got the grips off. Did a little bit of acro glass work. We'll get there. We've got the new mainspring housing. We verified in the shop the interrelationships between the grip safety and the trigger and between the thumb safety and the hammer. What we don't want this thing to do is go full auto with seven rounds to work with. So we'll insert a magazine. I'm going to hold the hammer and drop the slide because I don't trust anything yet okay it didn't go off again grip safety on or thumb safety on we'll pop the uh pop the mag out here if we can okay it put another one in the gun so now the gun's hot right now and i'm just verifying to make sure i don't get us out of sequence okay And I will tell you, I'll show you in the shop, this thing is the definition of hammer bite. In case you're wondering what that looks like, look at the end of the pencil. It's real and it does hurt. We've spent all this time and all this effort to make this gun worse. <laughs> Yikes. All right, we're going to do that one more time. And I like to see it, I like to see it prove three times, okay? And they don't, they don't kick that bad. I mean, it's not like the gun's gonna wind up in the parking lot. You can hang on to it here like this. And then there's another live one in there. I don't wanna do that again. Okay. We didn't get locked back because that's not something we check for. And I'm not entirely sure that this mag, yeah, this mag, this magazine, this lip isn't bent over far enough. So it didn't even pick it up in order to lock it. But I would say that we've proven our point. It hung. The uh, hammer does not drop unless the grip safety is in or it doesn't drop if the thumb safety is on and the grip safety is in. We're there. So let's get back up on the bench and um, honest to God, it bit me and they all do. That's why this gun was modified in the first place. So beginning gunsmiths, we now know that the gun works. Now we can invest labor in cosmetics, making this mainspring housing look good. 
um, you know, putting the, we've got a set of, of grips from way back. Those have to go up on a checkering cradle. So we'll do the checkering while the metal's in the conservation vat. And, um, and then we can come back out and double use the time. Um, I will tell you that cost is the enemy of the masses, but time is the enemy of the privileged few. Welcome aboard, guys. Let's get on with this. The grip panels that we found for, for this thing are like 1913 manufacturer walnut double diamond grip panels. So I've tightened one of these up by chasing out the diamonds, but that's what it looked like on the other side. Things rubbed smooth, gouges torn out, whichever. Um, and then Danish oiled it once. So we'll pop that off to one side. And we're doing this, like we said earlier, while all the parts are conserving. I ordinarily start out with a 75 degree tool just whenever I'm doing this reconstitution work because I want to be able to have a very, very uh, narrow line and just cut the bottoms. We will come back with a 90 degree tool. We'll come in here and just redefine. My head was probably in the way and we'll redefine. So if you're looking at this flat spot here, we'll just come back through. Once we get the bottoms right, we'll come back in, cut the tops off a little bit. We didn't make those diamonds all the way stand up because it's got to be plausible that these grips have been in service and that the gun hadn't actually had the the living crap popped out of it but we'll we'll burn through this and then go look at some of the metal work that we did um, before we got in the conservation of that i made that mainspring housing look significantly less heinous let's take a look at that we know the mainspring housing worked but it looks like it had been drug across the uh, the parking lot. I don't know. There's all these uh, scratches that are running counter to it. So the trick is, is we're going to come in and draw file this part. And as you can see here, that's the orientation of the file. And then I shot this quick video to show you the direction that the file moves. I'm not doing any work with the file here because I had one hand on the camera and one hand on the um uh, on the work because it was six o'clock in the morning and Bruno had just gone to bed. So we're not there yet. So once we got that done, we put a light polish on it with a little bit of sandpaper, which I didn't get a picture of. Then I took it over and sandblasted it and it came out looking sort of like this. It's sort of that matte look, um, a little bit of wire wheeling and then you blew it and it looks like this. All right, that's better. So we got the grips done. There's something I wanted to explain that I don't think that I got very clear before. The way this frame wore, we lost material here, there, there, and there in two different axes. So what happened was those frame rails were straight and then they wore like that. I'm not going to take the metal off in the middle, but that's why it's a little hard to push the slide on. But once you get it back, that's where we want to be. All right. So we've got this all done and we have it laid out on the bench. Um, I've kind of got it laid out in operational groups. We'll go ahead and put this thing together. These are the parts that we either didn't use or else we, we traded. And um, we're going to put this thing together. We'll go up on a vice next. I'm on a different vice than I normally work on because currently my, my main vice is in service with somebody doing me a favor. So I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut here. I'm just gonna show you how to put a couple of things together on a 1911 that the average guy doesn't get. This pin is supposed to just float through this hole and we're gonna have to cut a little bit more. You see there, it's supposed to float through. And then the mainspring pushes down and grabs that little detent notch right there. So this should just snap through. You really shouldn't have to beat this thing out of the hole with a hammer. So what I'm gonna do is just go over to a sander real quick and right here where the end of my fingernail is, I'm just gonna take ever such a small amount off there because this thing has been beat down so hard that it's mushroomed the end out like this. But this should go all the way through and that's gonna be our litmus test as to whether or not we got it or not. Okay, see that goes in and then it hangs up, right? All right, so let me go knock this down a little bit. I'll be right back. We'll kind of ream this hole out a little bit. I don't know if there's something up inside of it because I've got the pin figured out. 
The pin goes in smoothly. Ah, there it was. It was something down on the bottom of the hole. So either way I go in, this pin should be a smooth slide through, and now it is. Fix that before you get 18 pounds of mainspring loaded up in this thing, or it's more than that. So I put a little bit of lube on this, just a little bit of oil. Now, the pin that goes in here is a high-hatted pin. We showed that before. It's got that little um, lip on it, just like the sear and hammer pin has. So that pin is falls in, and then it's captured by the fact that this is up in the mainspring housing. So you mount this thing so that the pin will drop in. You're not trying to put it in from the bottom. And then I, I try to do this. I come in from the side so that I can put my considerable body weight into this. And what you're not seeing is me. I'm going to lean into it. And when you lean into it like that, it then becomes significantly easier to just drop that pin in, give it a little tap to seat it, pull it out, and bang. And now you're set. So now the mainspring cassette is captured, you see. And then the hammer strut goes down in that. That's an awful lot of energy stored in a little itty bitty box. But you got to admit, that looks way better than it looked yesterday. Going to prep a couple of things inside the gun. The way this sear is, it's sitting here and it's got this half moon shape. And then it's got this angle right here, the top part of it, right? So what you can do is you can lay a stone on that and take a swipe or two at it and clean up the nose. And I don't mean a lot of work. And the other thing you do is, let me see here if this is showing up right. Where is the shiny part on it? Okay. See that shiny line right there? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpie that shiny line down so that it disappears. So that I know that when I lay the stone on this, and I'm not talking about taking much. I'm talking about going like that. And that's it. And that's all we're going to do. And there's a very, very, I don't even know how I'm going to get this show up. There's a very thin silver line starting to show up there. Never allow that silver line to be more than one half. So here's what you get. You wind up with something. When you're looking at the end of this, this is what you're looking at right here. And there will be silver down here. And the top of this will still be black. And that's what you want the nose of that sear to look like. Never, under any circumstances, go below 15 thousandths of an inch. Never take that surface right there less than 15 thousandths of an inch. Don't ever do that. All right? Just remember that number. You can't even measure it. Just do it this way. It's better. And for most of you guys, don't do it at all. But I'm just showing you how I do it. There is a bend in this extractor and it needs to have a very very slight bend to it we want the rim of the cartridge to just snap up underneath it here let me find one hey there's one you guys can see we just want the rim to snap up underneath it as it comes in out of the magazine it'll snap in like that do not ever make a 1911 extractor go over the top of the rim all right so what i'm looking for to make sure of here is that i have a very slight bevel you don't want any sharp edges in here and you want just enough tension on this thing that it'll hang on to a cartridge and i'll show you what i'm talking about here we're going to put that in okay so that's in now i've put the recoil shield back in here all right because i want to hold the extractor in its correct uh, rotational orientation and what you should be able to do is take a round and just snap it up underneath that and it should have enough atten uh, have enough tension to hang on to it and yet be easy to remove if you have to gorilla that cartridge up in there there's too much bend in the spring you gotta take a little bit of bend out of it from the middle if it falls out it's not tight enough you have to have just a little bit of bend in there and that will make your 1911 run a lot better if you do that Last thing I'm going to tell you here, and then I'm just going to put this gun back together again. When you go to put the uh, disconnector in the sear in, have a mag up inside the mag well here, because then the parts can't fall through. So that mag uh, up inside will make your life dramatically simpler. All right, I'm going to put this thing together so we can look at it now that it's all been, it's all been tightened up. And I'm going to tell you what, oh, baby, is that going to look good. 
to give you some idea where we were when we started, this is in 1918, USGI 1911, still in its unaltered form. It had been re-arsenaled, so none of the parts on it are original, but it's been run. It could stand to have a little bit of finish maintenance, but mechanically, it's, it's really good. The one we just did was a civilian Colt made in 1916. And this thing really, really needed some help. We did the finish maintenance on it. This is a little bit of rust bluing that we did here. Um, and we, we turned the thing black and it's, let me set that down there. We turned the thing black. It's not a bad looking piece of kit. Got the grips, took care of the bushing, took care of all that side to side slop in the frame. Um, made sure that all of the safety components worked the way they were supposed to. Recheckered the grips, not bad. So we're just going to show this thing in broad daylight and you too, you guys can do this as always. It's been a pleasure.